Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the bizarre magic of Brian Rushwood. Alright guys, here's the thing. Uh, what you're about to see, as far as I know, I'm the only performer in the United States doing in a public show. However, it's going to be something difficult for everyone to get a clear view of. So we need to elect two judges to come on stage. Normally, I ask for the two loudest, most outrageous people in the room. Personally, I'd much rather just require Scott and Brian to get up here on stage. Are they here? Right, okay, there's Brian. Let's get Brian on up here. Where's Scott? Oh, wow! on this side right here. We'll get Brian over here. So here's the thing. People ask where I get the ideas for the idiotic stuff I've brought. Uh -huh. yeah. Magic. <laughs> there we go. I think that's fixed. Uh, people ask where I get my ideas, and about five years ago, did some research at the University of Texas in Austin, which has a huge library of very old magic books. Found something written in the 1800s by the magician Jean-Eugène Robert Houdon, a legend in magic. Had a whole bunch of old magic crap that I'd heard of but one trick that I'd never encountered. It was something that blew my mind. It was a trick that he thought was charming until he performed it for an audience, and it freaked him out so much that a woman fainted at the show. He bolted from the gig, declaring, declaring he would never again be caught at such tricks. This is the guy who legitimized magic as a theater art. He's so important that Houdini named himself after him. And this is the trick he only tried once. Do me a favor, Scott. Grab that mic out of that stand. I want you to hold the mic in your right hand. Figure it out. Where's your pair of glasses? No. Hey, uh, uh, Brant, will you come around and grab it? Blah. Sorry, I won't move. Uh, we dropped that uh, little flashlight right there. Do me a favor. I need you to hold, uh, hold the mic in your right hand. Hold it in your left hand. Palm up. Uh, like you're going to talk into the mic. There we go. And I need you to describe in as much detail as you possibly can what object is inside that little silver box. Uh, what's in the box? It's uh, pepper pots. I'm kidding. Um, I would call that um, the part of the watch where you have to attach the uh, the main part of the watch where the face is, and you attach it to a metal wristband part of the watch. There's that little metal thing you can push in and pop out and extend the size of it. But the, but the, the shape is is cylindrical, right, and it's made of it's made of metal. Right. Well. Call it a nail for short. Sure. Right. Kind of that's going with all that. <laughs> but your job, your job, Brian, scoot on up here. Your job is to keep this flashlight pointed at the nail at all times so that uh, everyone in the back can at least catch a glimmer of what's going on. Feel free to get up close, just don't block. There we go. Your job, Scott, is to be the eyes for the folks in back who can't quite see by describing in detail, play by play, every single thing I do. Starting right now. He's putting it. He's licking it. He's, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Scott. It's <laughs> good. Keep going. You're doing right, good. Right, right. He's holding it in the air. It's in the air. He's about to stick it in his eye, probably because he's afraid. He's touching his eye. He's dropping it in. Oh my gosh, people! He's putting it in his eye. He is literally putting it inside of it. Oh gosh, in his eyelid, and he's putting. Oh, holy shit! <laughs> His eye, it's not in his hand. It's all, okay, it's all the way it's in there. Right? Yeah. Okay, good. Keep going. You're doing great. Okay, Gary. Oh, he's pushing it now. He's mushing with it. He's smashing it on his nose. Maybe it's going down. I don't know. We can't see it from here. Oh my gosh. Uh, holy shite. <laughs> he's pushing it out. He's acting like it's coming out the other side of his eye. It looks like it might actually do it. Oh holy crap. It's coming out of his eye. Is it? Oh my gosh. It came out of his eye. In fact, in the interest of fairness, we'll trade jobs here. Here you go. You keep that pointed at the nail. Brian, you describe everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we go. Right, keep All, right. All right, well, he's licking the nail. <laughs> <laughs> Taste buds. I'm just glad we stopped calling it a rod. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yes, all right. He's, he is pulling his eyelid out, and he dropped the nail into his lower eyelid. It is now... There is a nail-shaped protrusion in his lower eyelid. <laughs> and show me a golf trip. <laughs> Hey Bob, it looks like uh, he's uh, looking at the illustrator. We uh, illustrate where that nail is going. It looks like he's going right through with the bridge of his nose. Oh, oh, it looks like it stopped. <laughs> of exactly what they saw. Wait for it, wait for it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is 
why I'm such a hit at children's birthday parties.